It's the middle of winter, and looking for an escape from Canberra, we decided to head to the coast and the Buttery National Park on Jarvis Bay, a short drive from Nowra. We are not in a hurry, and our campsite for this weekend was at Green Patch, adjacent to Green Patch Beach. We were very lucky with the weather this weekend, a blue sky making the white sand and blue water stand out. Nearby to Green Patch, and actually running through the campsite, is a freshwater creek, with lots of tannin running through the water, turning it a strong brown against the white sand. The water quality is not as good as it should be, with a large number of animals in the area. Kangaroos, possums... Somewhere along this creek is a bit of a cascade of water, so hopefully we can find that this morning too. Walking back into the campground, we we're actually heading into section Y. There's two sections of the campground, section D and section Y, and both offer plenty of camping for different <laughs> needs. <laughs> you can see, you sink <clears throat> pretty fast. And it sucks you in. <laughs> I told you. Governor's head is at the northeastern end of the National Park and is a popular spot for whale watchers in the right season, generally April to May on their way north and September to October on their way south. We saw some New Zealand fur seals fishing for lobsters in the rocks, but we didn't see any whales. Adjacent to Governor's Head is Murray's Beach, another beautiful stretch of white sand and blue water. At the eastern end, the Pacific Ocean meets the beach and there is a diverse and unusual occurrence of sea grasses and kelp gardens mixed with reef, corals and rocks, providing a great place for snorkeling, diving and spotting stingrays, octopus, Port Jackson reef sharks and many other fish species. This beach and Governor's Head also look out towards Bowen Island, a safe habitat for approximately 5,000 breeding pair of little penguins. Murray's boat ramp is the main point of access for boats in the area. While we were there, there were plenty of people fishing, although not many fish appeared to be caught. The Manyanga Waraga Dugan Trail is a 4.9 km walking track at the eastern end of the National Park. While spring was a still a few weeks off, a few flowers were already starting to show their colours during our walk, and much of the walk is covered by coastal banksia and coastal scrub. Along the walk, you'll find 14 interpretive signs which provide a self-guided tour of the park's natural and cultural heritage and history. Although during our walk, we noticed a few of the signs were faded due to sun wear.
The sea cliffs on this side of the park are quite spectacular, and the walk overlooks Governor's Head, Murray's Beach, and back towards South Cape St George, which has the ruins of the Cape St George Lighthouse on it. Unfortunately, we were unable to get out there on this trip due to the tracks being closed from flood damage in storms that occurred a few weeks ago. The Green Patch Campground is one of several campsites at Butteree, although it was the only one open during our visit. It has sites for caravans, camper trailers, car campers and hike-in campers, and overall was a great place to stay. I know that it is always booked out over the Christmas break, but we had no problems booking it for our stay. This creek is running right through the campground, and as we arrived in the dark, we could hear the water cascading across the rocks. Campsite 55 looked like a great spot to camp. Our campsite was a great location also, although reversing the trailer in was a challenge due to several posts and rocks placed opposite the space. I ended up going against the one-way signs and reversing in from the opposite direction, which proved to be popular, others nearby doing the same thing to get into their camp spots. Our Jayco Cross Track was the perfect vehicle for this type of camping. The large outdoor kitchen being great for us to cook and serve our meals. The trees overhead would be fantastic in summer, providing plenty of shade for us if we were camping. It also provided plenty of shelter for a possum, a couple of wallabies and plenty of birds that made their acquaintance. We were advised by a local that we should visit Point Perpendicular Lighthouse as it has great views across the bay and is a popular spot for whale watching. Unfortunately, we were a bit late to see the whales migrate north, but the lighthouse and surrounds were still a great place to visit. Nearby was a walking track to something called the Outer Tubes. We didn't really know what to expect here, but followed the walking track down the hill towards the water reaching a steep set of stairs heading out into the rocks. The Outer Tubes is one of only two recorded places for pelagic fishing from the shore or rocks. Usually these fish, swordfish and tuna, are only caught out at sea on a boat. So here we are at the Outer Tube. Quite a spectacular little spot. It is. Good for catching. Hole in the Wall Beach gets its name from the sandstone rock wall with a hole in it at the northeastern end of the beach. The hole has now collapsed to form a U shape and is a popular photography spot, especially in the early morning. We were there in the evening and the views were no less spectacular. Better still, there was no competition for space to try and take photos while we were there. Absolutely spectacular just watching sunset.
On the southwest corner of the Buderi National Park is the very long, ocean-facing Brerera Beach. This beach is just a short cliff walk away from Cave Beach, another of the popular campsites. But as Cave Beach was closed, we accessed the beach from the far west end near the Bay of Plenty Lodges. During our walk into this beach, we ran into a couple of young people who had been surf fishing that morning and they were walking away with seven large fish, about 60 to 70 centimetres each in length. They told us that was their catch of the morning after one hour of fishing. The sand on Brerwera Beach is, isn't as white as the Jarvis Bay side, but the surf is more prominent and this area is known to be popular with surfers. On our visit, in the middle of winter, there was only one brave person out in the water trying to catch a break. Skinny tree ferns in the background. Covering over 80 hectares, in a unique setting of cultivated areas surrounded by natural bushland, the Buderi Botanic Gardens display over a thousand species of native plants from the New South Wales south coast. Given that we were there during winter, we didn't see too many flowers, but the green of the mosses covering the paths, as well as the tree leaves and bushes, were still something special to see. Does it? A rhododendron hybrid? We tried our hand at a bit of night photography while we were at Buderi. Some of the images turned out really clear and others were spoiled by the wispy clouds still in the sky. But overall, our trip was fantastic. And given that we are not in a hurry, we were quite happy to spend a couple of days just walking around this lovely park. <laughs>